the martyrdom of some of Paul's friends and brethren who were imprisoned with him shortly after he was offered up, besides others who were slain afterwards. It is related that shortly after the death of the Apostle Paul, his brethren and fellow prisoners, whom he mentions in the epistles which he wrote from his prison, namely Aristarchus, Epaphras, Aquila, Prisca, Adronicus, Junius, Silas or Silvanus, Anisiphorus, etc., followed in his footsteps in suffering for the name of Christ. Aristarchus, a traveling companion of Paul, slain at Rome under Nero about A.D. 70. Aristarchus, a native of Thessalonica, was with Gaius, Paul's companion in his journey from Macedonia to Asia, with which Gaius he was apprehended at a certain time in an uproar at Ephesus, but for that time made his escape. Afterwards, however, he was brought to Rome a prisoner, just at the time that Paul also was apprehended for the testimony of Jesus Christ. This friend of God saluted the church at Colossae by the hand of Paul, of which Paul makes mention, writing, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you. This imprisonment, however, was not the end of it, for he was also devoured by that cruel lion. Nero, about the time of Paul's death after having been several years previously a faithful pastor of the church at Thessalonica. Epaphras, a fellow prisoner of Paul, slain under Nero about A.D. 70. Epaphras was a faithful minister of Jesus Christ for the church at Colossae, which, while in bonds at Rome, he saluted by the hand of Paul, as appears from the epistle Paul wrote from his prison at Rome to the Colossians, in which, among other things, he says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you, and them that are in Laodicea, and them in Hierapolis. Concerning his being a prisoner with Paul, or apparently sharing the same dungeon with him, Paul writes to Philemon in the conclusion of the epistle, There salute thee, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus. Hence it follows that those write not without foundation, who hold that Epaphras also suffered a violent death under the persecution of Nero. Four fellow laborers and relatives of Paul, namely Prisca, Aquila, Andronicus, and Junia, martyred at Rome under Nero about A.D. 70. The Apostle Paul, at the conclusion of his epistle to the Church of God at Rome, very lovingly saluting different saints residing there, mentions among others two persons who had laid down their own necks for his life, also two others whom he calls his fellow prisoners, doubtless because they were subject with him to like persecutions and suffering on account of the name of Christ. All those he mentions by name and salutes them in apostolic manner. Of the first two he writes thus, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks. The last two he mentions in this manner, Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. What was the end of these persons is stated neither in Paul's epistles nor in any other part of the New Testament, but other writers hold that in the aforementioned persecution of Nero they suffered and fought unto death for the truth of Jesus Christ, which cannot well be contradicted, since the bloodthirstiness of this emperor, especially against the Christians, was so great that but few of those who fell into his hands escaped without bloodshed or a miserable death. Silas, or Silvanus, scourged at Philippi in Macedonia and died a martyr about A.D. 70. Silas, also called Silvanus, together with Judas, surnamed Barsabas, was added to the apostles Paul and Barnabas. These men were leaders among the brethren and were to bear testimony to those matters which had been considered and decided upon by the apostles at Jerusalem for the welfare of the church of God. This Silas, having once promoted with Paul the work of the Holy Gospel at Philippi, in Macedonia, he was apprehended together with Paul, 
brought before the rulers, publicly scourged, though without trial, and thus maltreated, cast into prison, against right and reason, with his feet made fast in the stocks, but was by divine providence miraculously delivered, an earthquake at midnight opening the doors of the prison. According to the statements of some writers, he afterwards became bishop of the church at Corinth, and died a martyr after having done much preaching. This much is certain according to the testimony of Holy Scripture that he was not only apprehended and scourged for the gospel's sake, but suffered many indignities before his end. Onesiphorus, a friend of Paul, and Porphyrus, his companion, tied to wild horses and dragged or torn to death at Hellespontus, through the edict of Nero about A.D. 70. Onesiphorus was an Asian, a citizen of Ephesus, in Asia Minor, and very virtuous and godly in life, so that he frequently came to visit, converse with, and comfort the Apostle Paul in his bonds at Rome, on account of which Paul rejoiced with all his heart and prayed to God to reward him for this kindness in the great day of recompense. Concerning this, Paul writes this to Timothy, the Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me, and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently, and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day, and in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. In the conclusion of the same letter, he affectionately salutes the household of Onesiphorus, saying, Salute, and the household of Onesiphorus, grace be with you, amen. Some writers say that this pious man was bishop of the church of Colophon, others of Coronia, but whether Colophon and Coronia at that time were not one and the same city called by two different names, or if they were two separate cities, whether he had the oversight over both churches at once is a matter of little consequence. It is sufficient for us that the historians agree in the fact that he and Porphyrus, his fellow servant of Jesus Christ, were first beaten with many severe stripes at Hellespontus by the order of Adrianus the governor, and afterwards both together tied to wild horses and thus dragged or torn to death by virtue of Nero's bloody edict.